The county is obligated to provide medical um, services to inmates, and uh, we we have a very large contract with CFMG. Okay. That's a total separate issue than this, so. Uh, yes. Okay, that's my. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions from board members? I notice we have at least one representative yeah. from the hospitals. I, I got a question here, Tom, on the agenda summary. First of all, it's the fiscal impact. It's left blank, and certainly there is a fiscal impact on this. I was surprised that there wasn't nothing, no projection of that on an annual or a recurring basis. But the other point is uh, the recommended action motion doesn't, it says basically to find out what's going on, but on the agenda summary it says that the sheriff's office is recommending that we discontinue making the payments. Does the CEO's office make the same recommendation? Okay. Uh, thank you, Norm. Uh, any members of the public want to speak on this? <laughs> Supervisor Pinches and the rest of the uh, supervisors, thank you for permitting me. I'm Terry Burns, president at Ukiah Valley Medical Center. There's a reason that in California, about 20% of the hospitals have closed in the last 20 years. And uh, a lot of the time it relates to what goes on in the emergency room. And uh, when I look at the aggregate effort, we, we do make an effort to bill everybody. Uh, we aggressively, try to identify uh, all patients when they come in after we uh, comply with EMTALA to make sure that they're stable and then we go and try to find their insurance and make sure that they're insurable. But uh, typically we're performing this service at the request of, of an officer. And in those portion of the uh, incidents that occur, and there are some where it's an officer involved, physical altercation, uh, occasionally in the arrest of a of a suspect. Uh, in the case of Mendocino Coast Hospital, uh, there's at least one story up there where somebody was left in the ED uh, for a period, essentially transferred custody to the hospital while they were medically cleared and then uh, told to call back and get the patient back into the system. Uh, hospitals are assuming and taking pretty substantial cost in this. And in the meetings that were held, while I wasn't present there, uh, we did talk about reducing the fees uh, uh, that were charged. We're not, tr we don't make any money off of this. The 35% of charges is below what it cost us to provide this service. And, uh, but we talked about reducing it down to what, what are called Medi-Cal fees. And uh, that would probably result in a reduction of about 30% of this number. And uh, there seemed to be a consensus. We didn't have an agreement but there was uh, some discussion around that number. And uh, I guess I would speak to support that. I've talked to the other hospital executives in the community, in our region, in our county, and uh, all of us struggle to keep our emergency rooms open and operational. And uh, uh, when somebody walks in and says, and instructs us to take care of a patient, uh, we do our best uh, although not always successfully to move those patients through fast, quickly, efficiently for the county. And it's, we're providing a service to the county to medically clear these patients. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Burns. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak to you for a few minutes. My name is Kevin Eric. I'm the president of Frank R. Howard Memorial Hospital. And uh, similar, similar concerns to the ones that Terry Burns uh, just brought up. Um, one of the main concerns that we have is if the, if the county doesn't pay for these services, who is responsible for the cost of the services that are provided? Uh, and what ends up happening in a hospital setting is there's cost shifting that goes on constantly. And so what, it, what happens is if, if a patient's brought in and there are no funds available to pay for the services for that patient, then somehow charges have to be put on to uh, insurance payers, um, other payers of some kind that can actually make up the difference for what, it's, what we're not getting paid for those services. And so, um, so I would strongly, um, uh, I mean, I, f I feel, I guess, very strongly too that we should come close to at least uh, payment for what it actually costs for the services. But we also realize that um, there are some uh, 
struggles that the county has as well from a fiscal uh, environment, and, and you're being squeezed very tightly, just like the rest of us are. And so I think, as Terry mentioned, we're willing to try to negotiate, try to work with you closely to come up with something that at least there is some sort of payment for the services, even though it doesn't necessarily cost or provide us with the actual cost for the services. Uh, the same thing with Howard Hospital at 35% of charges, that's actually below what it actually costs us to provide the service. So we're already actually taking a loss for those patients. I spoke with my ED manager right before I came down here this afternoon and asked him what was happening in the ED. And generally speaking, the law enforcement works very well with us. And, um, and we do try within the emergency room to expedite uh, the movement of any patient that's there that comes in that is a prisoner so that we don't have them sitting in the hallways or in the hospital for, or in the emergency room for long periods of time, try to get them in and out. And so I think we do try to um, work with uh, law enforcement. And, um, and we have had one or two incidences, but not recently, but we have in the past had one or two incidences that I've heard of where, where a patient or a prisoner was brought in and uh, law enforcement uh, stated that, you know, we don't want to book them yet because we don't want to pay the charges, so you call us when, when you discharge the patient and we'll come pick them up and we'll arrest them at that point in time. But what that's doing is, is that's putting um, pressure on, on the staff to try to monitor uh, prisoners, and it actually is very risky for our staff to be in a position of, of taking care of a prisoner. So again, I'd, I'd like to um, encourage you to to, to try to work with the hospitals and maybe the three hospitals and the county, we can come up with something that does save you some additional dollars, but I'll, at least we get something for the services that we provide. Thank you very much. Thank you, Kevin. Anybody else wants to speak? Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Tim Rohan, I'm the Director of Emergency Services for Ukiah Valley Medical Center. And in my experiences as a paramedic, as a flight nurse, and working in emergency departments up and down the state of California, um, there are many opportunities that we have to interact with uh, patients on a pre-booking conditions. <clears throat> I'd like to make it very, uh, just the request to the board, uh, how important it is as the funding for these services. We cannot turn patients away. If we have law enforcement bringing patients to the emergency department without the patient's request, that patient isn't necessarily coming there to request to be seen, they're being requested at the officer's request or at the county's request. And I think that's a very important concept for us to keep in mind. We have no opportunity to refuse service to anybody, but again, these are people, true, some of them could have a, uh, a pre-existing condition, some people could be injured in an accident, uh, sometimes this could be in a result of being uh, incarcerated or uh, being brought to the hospital. But I think it's very important that we, um, everybody in the community try to share their part or share their burden. And I think that what we've actually looked at when we were talking in our meetings, which is to look at some of the uh, funding about a Medi-Cal funding or what we look at Medicare rates, um, which is significantly uh, less than what we've been requesting from the county in these uh, circumstances, but I think would be actually fair to um, both the hospitals, the community, and to the county. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Okay, we'll bring that back to the board. Uh, Mr. Chair, if I, if I sure. can just add, I, we enjoy a very good relationship with all three hospitals. Uh, the Coast Hospital, Howard Memorial, and of course UVMC. They do get us to, our deputies in, and they, we get it out as soon as possible. And I, I can't sit here in front of you and say that I'm saying to not pay the hospitals anything. I, I hope we can come up with an agreement because the relationship that, that we have with the hospitals is very, very important to the quality of public safety that we have throughout the county. And I, of course, want to maintain the relationships that we have with these hospitals. And, and they do break their back to give us the very, very best service possible. So if, if it was going to be